Alright, this is my review of Mary Ariana's Boulevard, An American Liberator. This book was published in April of 2013 by Simon & Schuster. This edition has 624 pages and it only has 47 ratings on Goodreads. And I am baffled as to why you haven't heard of the name before. This is a historical nonfiction biography, obviously, of Simon Bolivar, who in the 18th century liberated pretty much all of South America. This chronicles his life as well as his, his many revolutions across South America. Uh, also, don't let 624 pages really dissuade you from this book because it really is only like 464 pages because of course, since this is based on a real person, this has a huge bibliography, index, notes, you name it. I absolutely love this book. I don't know why more people don't know about this. This is one of the first books that I really feel on history that uses the term American correctly. There tends to be um, this misconception that American means U.S. You know, people who are United States citizens are Americans, and Mexicans are Mexicans, Canadians are Canadians, Venezuelans are Venezuelans, or South Americans. Not even all of North America is America, it's just the United States. And this book really solidifies this whole concept of what it means to be American, and not just in the U.S. sense. I feel like this book really does do a very, very good job of letting you know who Simon Bolivar is and the political climate, the people around him. Mary Ariana, I think she does do journalism work, but also she writes novels, and this was like a perfect blending because it combined fact with the emotions that you want to have from characters in a novel, the, the sense of who these people are, the way that you would write a reg like write a fictional character, you get that sense from these real people by using historical accounts. It's like their letters, documents, including like what people said about each other. You get a clear sense of who Bolivar was. Like you could almost see like the scenes unfolding. I can see Bolivar as a child, like if he was in school he would be really fidgety and then he would always look outside and next thing you know he has <laughs> skipped school and he's going with the rough kids or the kids of the lower class. You really feel it when he like gets into a relationship and then it just tragedy happens and it just hits you in the heart you you feel his optimism and then his betrayal and you you feel his passion and also the passion of the revolution and this book i felt very patriotic reading it because this was one of the first historical accounts involving american history in which people of color were not painted as victims or the enemy. Um, it was extremely refreshing to me to actually see the indigenous people, the people that were slaves, they really stood up and fought for their rights, they fought for their country, they fought for a place in the world, a place in their country, they fought for the equality and liberty, and they fought alongside you know, whites, mixed people, and it was just very, very inclusive revolution part. Um, there were definitely certain elements of uh, this revolution that were problematic, of course, but it really put a really deep human touch on these, this topic, and it really made me really think about what is, or what we commonly think as American history. Historically, at least in the U.S., we definitely do tend to glorify the American Revolution, the tenets that the United States was built on, the history, George Washington, give me life, liberty, or give me death, all those things, but I felt that these things were ten times told because I felt these sentiments in the American Revolution in South America were more inclusive because of course, when they were fighting for independence from England in the United States, they totally were like, yeah, totally independence and freedom for every white male with, who owns land. But in this one, very early on, Bolivar said, we can't have slavery. We cannot truly believe in freedom, liberty, and equality if we have slavery. And he made that decision very early on to free all the slaves. He, many of his generals and his commanders were black, mixed, indigenous, just a wide variety of different people from different backgrounds. 
in his command as well and him talking about South America and how the culture is and how it's not as much European as it is a mixture of African culture and indigenous culture and then there's Spanish culture of course like from Spain in there and it made me really think that you know the United States isn't as much of a melting pot as we think it is I mean if we think about the United States we, we do want to call ourselves a melting pot but we don't really like while we do accept people from different cultures and different ethnicities we don't ever really incorporate their culture into our greater culture so can it really be a melting pot the only things that we kind of really incorporate are things like you know people celebrate Cinco de Mayo or St. Patrick's Day which is a Catholic holiday but um you know, those are drinking holidays, and people do it once a year, and then, you know, and, and most of the time when people, you know, don the traditions of different cultures, sometimes it takes on the tone of appropriation and kind of making fun of them, and it's like, this is the weird thing, this is not mine, and we don't tend to really absorb the different cultures in the United States. Also, like, you know, in the terms of the amount of land that the revolution really happened over, you know, the United States is kind of small beans. I mean, you take pretty much the 13 colonies because, I you know, half of the country that half of the United States was bought, you know, more than half of the country was bought, including Alaska. Um, we just bought most of the country. We really didn't actually fight another country to make it independent for, like, pretty much almost every inch of South America. This guy was involved in fighting for its freedom to, you know, be independent from Europe. It's just, the history really comes alive in this book. It really, like, don't let, don't let the size, um, really intimidate you. It really, the scenes really just unfold in front of your eyes. It is really entertaining. It is really inspiring. I mean, and also, the women in this, Oh my gosh, they are actually kick-ass. There are so many instances where women went into battle, soldiers took with them their wives and their mistresses and their lovers with them along into battle, including Bolivar. He had a lot of lovers. These ladies, they, they, they would go into battle, they would tend for the men, and they would be right there. And even in a certain instance, they would follow the men into battle carrying babies. You know, like the whole fire Latina? these are these women are like that times ten I would say they're amazing and um, most of all there is one of his lovers who since he's learned known as the liberator she's known as the liberatrix and she is absolutely kick-ass her name is Manuela Sainz and she is really the most influential lover that Simone Bolivar had. She totally bucked all social expectations. She did whatever she wanted. She did it when she wanted. She was so passionate about what she believed and in supporting Bolivar. I mean, she wasn't even she wasn't even like a pushover for him, but she was just she was very very um, outspoken. There's one part in here where she fights off assassins coming for Bolivar and she fights them off with a sword and I instantly thought of Zorro with Salma Hayek. Is it Salma Hayek? But yeah, so I totally believe that this book should be made into either into a movie uh, or three movies because it should be divided into three parts, I would suggest. I would suggest that this movie be made into like a high budget HBO miniseries like there was with John Adams. Um, like I can imagine in the first part there will be like Simone Bolivar's early life, you know, where he's growing up, he's growing up rich and he is his problems with his education and then he goes to Europe and then he's inspired by Napoleon and then he falls in love and then you know he becomes disheartened about what Napoleon becomes and then in the second part you're like he comes back to South America and he wants to give give freedom and equality to all of his all of the Americans all of his fellow Americans, and then he's just like at the height of his, you know, fever, the, the 
the battles, the wins, like just the tit and tat, like he has nemesis in here and they, it still be perfect, just perfect for a movie, like this story, this piece of history is just perfect for a movie. And then the last part, like his political downfall and him just watching a lot of things not coming to fruition and, you know, and also like mistakes that he has made coming back to bite him. Um, I think it would be an amazing, an amazing thing to watch. As soon as I finished this, I was like, I want to see this now. And Salma Hayek is Manuela Sainz. I've already cast her. She's gonna get her contract in the mail soon, so she is already on contract for that in my mind. Seriously, I highly, highly recommend Boulevard by Maria Arana. I love this book. I give it 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I want to own this now. I I had to bookmark certain, I had to like mark certain things because I was just so amazed at even like the writing in here. It's just so descriptive and it's so, it does in a way that's definitely not boring. Um, and there are even funny parts in here. It really is honestly one of the first nonfiction books that have made me want to read this author's fiction. So I already have put on my to read list um, Marie Arana's Cellophane, which is about a guy who wants to do something in South America and he develops, he finds the recipe for cellophane and there's magical realism and that sold me. So I want to read more works of her as some of her fiction. If you're interested in American history, this is definitely American history because I, this one thing I just never really thought about before because like that is one thing that's distinctly American and that's revolution. We've all gone through revolutions. Maybe except Canada. I'm sorry Canada. It's just left out. You can still do a revolution. It's never too late. Then you can be in on the club. Anyway, that was my long rambly review. I'll it's going to be horrible trying to piece all that together, but I have to do it somehow. So, I will do it. I hope you guys honestly do check out Bolivar, read it, and you will see that it should be a movie. Maybe get a Kickstarter started on this. Probably not. But, um, hope you have a great day. Bye.